हेलो एवरीवन वेलकम टू योर ओन चैनल फूड टेक नेटवर्क माय नेम इज हनुष शर्मा आई होप यू आर ऑल डूइंग गुड इन दिस लेक्चर विल टॉक अबाउट द कॉन्सेप्ट्स ऑफ बैलेंस डाइट एंड मील प्लानिंग अ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट एस्पेक्ट ऑफ ह्यूमन न्यूट्रिशन सो लेट अस बिगिन विद इट ऑफ बैलेंस डाइट वी कैन से दैट इट मींस गेटिंग द राइट टाइप ऑफ एन अमाउंट ऑफ फूड्स एंड ड्रिंक्स टू सप्लाई न्यूट्रिशन एंड एनर्जी फॉर मेंटेनिंग बॉडी सेल्स टिश्यूज organs and for supporting normal growth and development it is all the methods and procedures which are needed to sustain the body at the basic level and also support all the vital metabolic processes in terms of getting the right kind of food food pyramid comes into a very important picture so a food pyramid is a representation of the optimal number of servings to be eaten each day from each of the basic food groups now when we talk about the basic food groups we have different methods of classifications which will uh, be discussed further and uh, the first pyramid of of this kind like the first food pyramid was developed in sweden so in 1992 food pyramid introduced by united states department of agriculture USDA was called the food guide pyramid or eating right pyramid it was updated in 2005 to my pyramid and then was replaced by my plate in 2011 so this is how the timeline of food pyramid has been now in this image you can see how do we structure different kind of foods uh in the pyramid so as you can see bread cereal rice and pasta groups which forms the bottom of this pyramid has to be consumed the most like 6 to 11 servings can be consumed in a day next comes vegetable and fruit groups which are to be consumed in equal proportion like 3 to 5 servings depending on your diet availability and local culture then we have the third category that is milk yogurt and cheese group that is a dairy group it has to be consumed two to three uh, times a day or two to three servings and we also have meat poultry fish dry beans eggs and nuts group which are needed to be served two to three times a day and at the top or at the la the th things which are needed to be consumed the least are fats oils and sweets these are to be consumed sparingly very less now let us discuss about the major food nutrients so food nutrients can be divided into major nutrients or macronutrients and the micronutrients major nutrients includes proteins carbohydrates fats and also water although it is not considered a part of food but it is consumed majorly and then we have micronutrients like minerals calcium magnesium phosphorus zinc selenium etc in micro category we also have vitamins that it, that is the fat soluble ones a d e k and the water soluble ones c and b group and we then have water as we said when we talk about carbohydrates so chemically carbohydrates are polyhydroxy aldehydes or ketones and these can be classified into different types polysaccharides monosaccharides disaccharides oligosaccharides etc these are energy giving compounds necessary for daily activity it is necessary for proper working of brain heart and nervous tissue the simple carbohydrates may also include refined flour glucose and the complex one includes dietary fibers and other such things fiber is equally important as it helps in reduction of weight giving bulk to the diet proper bowel movement and healthy intestine sources can be wheat oats bran vegetable whole cereal pulses fruits etc then comes the second category of group that is uh, proteins which is chemically polypeptide or a polymer of amino acids so it helps in tissue and muscle building it boosts up immunity helps to maintain fluid balance because albumin and all those proteins are you know to a very large extent dissolved in the serum it also helps in healing when we have any injury or a disease deficiency of proteins can lead to muscle wasting weight gain poor immunity and lower hemoglobin sources can have like uh, milk and milk products soybean dal egg chicken fish etc the next category of food is fats the main function of fats is to give energy 
now important for it is very important for transport of vitamin a d e and k because when we study the physiology of digestion we find that fats are uh, these fat soluble vitamins are dissolved in the fat and this is how they are transported to various organs fats also cover organs such as uh, internal ones heart kidney liver and helps in insulating these vital organs there are two types of fats saturated and unsaturated saturated ones chemically are solid at room temperature and can include uh, examples like ghee butter coconut oil etc on the other hand unsaturated fat can include liquid fats such as omega 3 fatty acids omega 6 fatty acids which are very good for our health sources may include olive oil rice bran oil soybean oil groundnut oil and mustard oil we also have animal sources like fish which is a very good source of omega-3 fatty acid. Deficiency of fat comes with an associated deficiency of fat-soluble vitamins and have symptoms like dry skin, nervous disorders, etc. It, an excess uh, consumption of fat can lead to weight gain, elevated blood lipid levels, etc. Now let us see what is the recommended dietary allowance for major nutrients like how energetically these should be consumed. So if we see carbohydrates have to contribute around 65% of the total diet, proteins are needed to be consumed around 1 gram per kg of the body weight and it depends on age, gender, physiological condition etc. And fats can be consumed like 3 to 4 table teaspoon of oil and one teaspoon of ghee depending on your diet so you can see uh, carbohydrates are providing around 50 to 60 percent of your energy then we have protein providing 10 to 20 percent fats providing 25 to 35 percent and like saturated fats a subcomponent of fats have to be less than 10 percent of your daily energy intake and same is the case with added sugar that is sucrose or table sugar now, as I said earlier, we divide group, like we divide food into different groups. So uh, let us see how ICMR or Indian Council of Medical Research divides food into different groups. So the first group is known as cereal and cereal based products. So it includes products like rice, wheat, ragi, maize, bajra and other millets, flakes, wheat flour, sprouted cereals, etc. And they are known to provide energy, proteins, invisible fat. That is because ultimately if you study the metabolism, like the fatty acid metabolism in the human body, then excess carbohydrates lead to the production of fatty acid in the liver. So that's why we call that they help in production of invisible fat. B vitamins, iron, calcium, fiber are other nutrients associated with this group. Then we have pulses and legumes. For instance, Bengal gram, black gram, cow pea, soybeans, peas, etc. They are a source of they are a source of proteins, energy, invisible fat. Once again, thiamine, that's vitamin B1, riboflavin, vitamin B2, folic acid, calcium, iron, and fiber. The third category includes milk and meat products. It can include milk and skim milk, cheese, yogurt, ghee, and all those things. Although ghee is in a separate section, but these products are a part of milk products and in case of meat we have chicken liver fish egg like poultry is also a part of this category it provides protein fat group b vitamins like riboflavin that is vitamin uh, 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 b with group vitamin and also calcium the fourth category is fruits and vegetables it can include options like mango guava tomato papaya orange sweet lime watermelon etc it also has a category of green leafy vegetables like amaranth spinach drumstick leaves coriander leaves fenugreek leaves etc other vegetables like carrot onion brinjal lady's finger or okra beans capsicum cauliflower and drumstick also fall in this category they are known to contribute carotenoids vitamin c riboflavin folic acid iron fiber riboflavin calcium and other such nutrients the last category is of fat and sugars fats can be consumed through various sources like ghee butter groundnut oil coconut oil margarine hydrogenated fats cooking oils and sugar can be consumed from like normal refined sugar and jaggery it provides energy essential fatty acids fat soluble vitamins and iron but it must be kept in our mind that excess consumption of fat and sugar comes with 
uh, you know the outcome of various kind of diseases like obesity diabetes hypertension cvds etc Nutri uh, nutrient deficiency is a term used to denote the symptoms which we observe in our body when we are deficient in one or more nutrients so you can see in this uh, you know chart we have piled up all the things which can be a symptom of nutrient deficiency poor night vision irregular heartbeat weight gain dizziness nausea anxiety dry eyes extreme fatigue breathing issues and pain in bones now let us study what are the factors that affect the balanced diet the main factors determining the amount of nutrients to be included in a balanced diet are biological determinants such as hunger appetite and taste economic determinants such as cost and income physical determinants such as uh, access to exercising education skills and time social determinants such as class culture social context psychological determinants such as mood stress and guilt attitude beliefs and knowledge about the food and also the culture religion uh, you know sort of other things attributes to the way in which we choose the balanced diet beginning with the biological determinants such as hunger appetite and taste so hunger and satiety human need energy and nutrients in order to survive different macronutrients have different effect of satiety for instance fat is the least satiating followed by carbohydrates then protein in addition low energy density diets have greater satiety than high energy density like high fat or high sugar diets next parameter is the taste or palatability palatability increases as the pleasure an individual experiences from eating a food increases the taste smell texture and appearance of a food on over and other such parameters have an overall impact on the palatability or degree of choosing that food to consume for instance sweet foods have a high sensory appeal and have higher palatability meaning that the food may be consumed for pleasure rather than a source of energy and nutrients it is reported that higher the palatability of a food the higher the consumption economic determinants first one is cost and income the cost of food and the ability of an individual to afford specific foods uh, are primary determinants of food choice low income groups are reported to consume unbalanced diets which are cheap and low intake of fruits and vegetable increasing the amount of available income for food choices however does not necessarily mean that individual will uh, individuals will consume a more balanced and healthy diet because we see people from the elite class consuming lots of fats and sugar and ultimately being prone to these markers like obesity diabetes cvds hypertension etc in addition individuals may resist buying new foods for the fear that the food may be wasted as the family may reject the food then we have physical determinants in this we will discuss about accessibility and availability accessibility to shops and the availability of foods within shops influence food choice this is associated with transport links and geographical locations for example food deserts are areas of resistance with a few or no shopping facilities improving access does not necessarily mean that individuals will change their food choice because they are you know they are doing this since so many years and it will take them time to change the way uh, they have been eating or consuming the things right education knowledge and skills also play a pivotal role in choosing the food we consume individuals that are educated and knowledgeable about healthy eating are more likely to opt for healthy dietary choices this however depends on whether the individual is able to apply their knowledge or not educating the population requires accurate and consistent <coughs> messages education on how to increase fruit and vegetable consumption is an in an affordable way such that no further expense is needed is the most important parameter to focus upon 
In addition, a lack of knowledge and the loss of cooking skills can also inhibit buying and preparing meals from basic ingredients. For instance, we have got to know uh, various kind of Western products which are very healthy. But most of us Indians are not aware of the methods of cooking. This makes that those foods inaccessible to us because we are not going to cook them because we lack the basic skill set needed to consume, cook them in the proper manner. Then we have time constraints. Time constraints will prevent individuals from adopting healthy choices, especially the young and those that live alone, who choose convenience foods. And we know that convenience foods are highly processed. They are processed so much and they have gone so many operations that most of them render very unhealthy to consume and do not contribute significantly to the health. The demand has been met with the introduction of more ready-to-cook meals and pre-packed fruits and vegetables instead of tools. Although the convenience foods are more expensive, customers are willing to pay for them because they want convenience and ease in consumption along with, uh, you know, taking a healthy diet. We then have social determinants such as social class, culture and social context. So when we talk about the socioeconomic aspects, there are differences in food choices in different social classes, which lead to both under and over nutrition. For example, people with the higher social class Groups tend to have either healthier diets like higher intakes of fruits, lean meat, oily fish, whole meal products and raw vegetables compared with those following uh, those residing in the lower strata of the society. It is thought that higher socioeconomic groups have healthier diets because they might have higher educational levels and more wealth to have them. They are also more health conscious and have healthier lifestyles. Social class differences in diet are of particular concern with respect to health inequalities. Culture also influences the food we consume. Culture influences impact on diet choices and food preparation. Evidence has shown that traditions, beliefs and values are among the main factors influencing preference, mode of food preparation and nutritional status. Cultural habits, however, have been shown to change. For instance, when individuals move to a new country and adopt the food habits of the local culture, they change what they used to consume in their own homeland. In terms of social context, we have like how people who have an impact on individuals eating behavior and the setting in which an individual consumes their dietary choice. People influence an individual's food choices directly and indirectly. Buying food on behalf of an individual is a direct impact, while learning from a peer's behavior like conscious or subconscious has an indirect impact. If I give you an example, suppose you are living, you are staying with a group of people who are very health conscious, they want to consume good foods which are healthy, contains high amounts of protein, fats and all the necessary things which makes your life suitable. So of course you will be going to have influence of these people on your dietary choices but that is not the case with another group which consumes processed food and like the foods which are not good for your health at all we then have psychological determinants such as mood stress and guilt the evidence supporting psychological determinants and food choice is limited and proposed mechanisms for the relationship are complex but still they exist so when we talk of the first determinant that is stress so stress can trigger changes in human behavior that can affect health. The effect of stress on food choice is complex and individualistic. Some people consume more food and make unhealthy food choices, while others consume less food. It is believed that stress-induced changes may be due to changes in motivation. Example, a reduced concern for weight control since you are not losing any weight after so much practice. Psychological and physiological parameters like reduced appetite, Changes in eating opportunities, food availability and meal preparation. Mood also determines how you eat. Food can change an individual's temperament and mood and also influence the food choice. Individuals report food cravings, especially among women during the premenstrual phase. And the relationship with food for dieters mean that people may feel guilty after indulging in food or attempting to restrict food and increasing the desire for the food. Attitudes and beliefs also contribute to the way we choose the balanced diet. Consumer attitudes and beliefs vary by individual. 
within groups of a population and across countries. If we talk about a pan-European survey of consumer attitudes to food, nutrition and health found that the top five influences on food choices were quality and freshness, which 74% people backed, price, which was backed by 43% people, taste, which was chosen by 38% of the consumers, trying to eat healthy was the choice of 32% people, and what my family wants to eat, a very lame dialogue, taken by 29%. These were average figures for 15 European countries, but results different differ significantly between countries and in individual areas also. We then have optimistic bias. There are a high percentage of individuals who perceive their diets to be healthy and do not believe that they need to make dietary changes. People therefore believe that they are at less risk from a hazard compared to others. People sometimes overestimate their consumption of fruits and vegetables. An individual who considers their diet is already healthy is, like, is going to less likely to be adapting to a healthier lifestyle as compared to the one who can accept that yeah my healthy my diet is not healthy and it's contributing to lots a lot many diseases in my life so this was all about this video i hope you liked it if you still have doubts you can drop them down in the comment section